Hello, in this screencast, we take a look at some of the issues raised by the concept of sustainability. The material from the textbook will not be repeated in these screencasts, but rather the essential points will be emphasized as well as the general uh, context of the book. You should watch all the way through the screencast, but you still have to do the reading and review the other slides. The objectives are for this week are for you to develop a basic understanding of chemistry, its safety, including the pathways of exposure and sources of information. Understand the principles of and the concepts behind green chemistry, including sustainability. Give examples of shifting base, baselines and possible tipping uh, points. After more than three billion years of life on Earth, life forms have been most diverse and dramatic in the last few hundred million years. Currently, there are some 1.5 million species living on the Earth, but that represents only about 5% of the species that ever existed. The rest are extinct. Edges, the regions of interface between ecosystems, species, and chemicals, are often the most interesting zones of adaptation, reactions, and change. On a global scale, this can be seen on shorelines and on along rivers. At a molecular scale, high-tech tools help us understand phenomena such as dissolving chemicals and other materials, combustion, and corrosion, which again happen most often at the interfaces of systems and at the mole molecular level at the interfaces of scales. An important point to realize about scales is that the word nanotechnology is used a lot nowadays, and that is the borderline between the area that chemistry interacts with and larger sizes where physics uh, comes into play. The ecosystem is one of the highest levels of organization that scientists use. The energy of life is derived from the sun and transferred to local and global food traps, from plants to herbivores to carnivores, and ecosystems provide our most essential needs. Nutrients and contaminants follow the same pathways through food webs as the energy. Plants and molecules use each other's waste. Plants use carbon dioxide chemical formula is CO2, and give us oxygen, chemical formula is O2, and we use oxygen to breed, and then we go ahead and produce carbon dioxide. For example, swamps and wetlands filter water, generate free oxygen, and store carbon in the form of growing and dead plants, not to mention providing habitat for moose, fish, and blueberries. This 20-minute video provides a good overview of the modern materials, the economy, the extraction, the production, the distribution, the consumption, and in their disposal. This system gives a lot of people an amazing standard of living, but it's currently believed not to be sustainable. Watch the video to learn about the new normal or ever-accelerating consumption. The limits of the system that are becoming more and more apparent around the world and some newer ideas. A sustainable society is one that is far-seeing and wise enough to not undermine its biological and social system. Green chemistry will be a critical feature in revolutionizing the unsustainable materials economy. No economy exists in isolation. 
Rather, it connects to the community of people who are in turn connected to local ex ecosystems. The mixed caste subsistence economies found in rural Alaska are clearly dependent on a healthy environment. Development should benefit these essential three aspects of human existence, culture, economy, and environment, all of which are related to personal and public health. We are seeing an evolution from profits only in economic thinking to a more people, planet, and profits. Without a healthy planet, you won't have healthy people. So what do profits mean if you have a sick workforce and a dying planet? The principles of green chemistry were developed to bring this thinking uh, into the industrial sector. sector. They're listed on the front cover of your textbook and in table 0 0.2 in the text. The cradle-to-cradle -cradle philosophy states that goods should be designed for reuse rather than disposal. It was only years ago that we came up with the concept of cradle-to-grave, and now we understand that that's not sustainable, so our thinking has evolved to cradle-to-cradle. -cradle. A lot of talk today uh, is about our ecological footprint. Biologists often talk about carrying capacity. An ecological footprint is the estimation of biologically productive space, land and water, needed to support a particular standard of living or lifestyle. For everyone on Earth to live like most people do in the U.S., we would need five more Earths.